Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku. Bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Friday, January 14th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. Just got back from Creek, Colorado, and the models are in. And it's a sin. Heavy snow coming to the eastern U.S. through January, period. We also have a geomagnetic storm ongoing, and Honga Tonga goes boom for days. Keep calm. It's boom time. Winter storm brings heavy snow and ice, may cause power outages. Yeah, this is a big one. Snowstorm threatens more than 88 million Americans across the entire eastern swath of the U.S., east of the Mississippi. A monster storm heading across the U.S. Ex expected to be the biggest of the season thus far. Part of the country could be could see 12 to 20 hours of continuous snowfall, the National Weather Service warned. Areas across the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Iowa are expected to get as much as 10 inches before it's over. And it's just beginning, folks. So heads up. Iowa continues to see snow, as predicted. And the numbers are looking as we predicted uh, 24 hours ago or so. Where is the map? There it is. Boom. 9 to 12 through the center of the state, Fort Dodge to Des Moines, uh, 6 to 9 for most of the center of the state, and the Quad Cities and the East Coast will be spared. Winter storm set to hit South Carolina, North Carolina this weekend. Hello, holy macaroni. We uh, predicted the totals the other night, and they're looking pretty consistent. You're looking for 8 to 12 from Asheville, south through Hendersonville, 5 to 8 from Franklin to Kahui, and all those areas. Uh, down in Deliveranceville. Winter storm to impact the central and eastern U.S. A strong system is bringing a wintry mix through the mid-Mississippi Valley into the southeast, then up the eastern seaboard this holiday weekend. Bitterly cold weather will settle across the northeast prior to the storm. Gusty winds are bringing fire weather conditions to portions of the southern plains. It's insane. Winter storm watches and warnings for over 12 states. Check, a, Take a look at the pink and blue. Who knew? Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, is picking up on some of those high winds. So heads up there. Well, as snow is coming to your forecast, let's look at the GFS model. It's insane. Here's that snow moving through Iowa right now. It's going to be piling up pretty thick, up to a foot overnight in the morning. They're going to wake up to quite a surprise there. Minnesota as well, northern Minnesota. The snow's going to be dropping down. Arkansas, northern Arkansas. There is a little pocket there with a foot of snow, like boom time. Tennessee is going to get out of the woods. Kentucky, it's going to be eastern Kentucky, central Tennessee, picking up the, the biggest totals there. And the region we warned about uh, from Asheville north, up on the Appalachian Spine through West Virginia, Snowshoe, uh, the Blue Ridge, and all of Western PA, all of Western New York, and some isolated areas in northern New Hampshire, eastern Maine. It's insane. 16 inches in 10 states? Are you kidding? And more systems behind it. Maybe bringing snow to Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. Who knows? But it's looking jiggy. And winter is less than halfway through. Seismic update. No quakes of note. That's good news. Now, as we look at Discover Solar Wind, a major shift in the BZ earlier today shot off the magnetometer, and we went into geomagnetic storm at KP6. Hello, moderate geomagnetic storm, but a big one at best simply for a solar wind shift in the BZ. This is the connection to the Earth to Sun, the magnetic field, and just a shift in the field from Earth to Sun caused a geomagnetic storm. We're still waiting for the coronal hole to couple, and it doesn't look like the density is moving much higher right now. So we're waiting for more activity, and there could be more geomagnetic storms as we move through the weekend. This is coming off an M1.8 solar flare, several C flares, and it's gotten quite quiet in the B range. But the three-day geomagnetic forecast is for uh, KP6 for January 15th. And KP5 for all of January 16th. So we just began the 15th and we certainly hit the 16th back on the 14th. Hello. <laughs> now the BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field or the IMF carried past Earth via a solar wind is currently tipped south. This could help disturb the geomagnetic field in the hours ahead, which it did. The BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field or the IMF 
continues to point south at negative 14 nanotesla, and the solar wind speed is fairly low by solar standards. And boom, this is what you get, geomagnetic K index of 6. That's because of our weakening magnetosphere and a sign of things to come, folks, as well as Honga Tonga. Wow, look at that pillar. Big boom. And according to the latest update, Honga Tonga Haipei, now days into the eruption, weeks into the eruption, has sent ash up to 17 kilometers today with 86,000 lightnings in the plume. So we sound like doom, but after two weeks of calm period, an activity has picked up again with a high free line magmatic eruptive phase. A spectacular explosion occurred at 1514 UTC yesterday, characterized by dark and dense masses of pyroclastic materials and ground-hugging currents known as surges. And then they're going to go on to some more garbage here where they talk about uh, gravity waves. But this type of Sertsian and Frio magmatic eruption and an increasingly larger and dense plume set ash up to 55,000 feet altitude. So that's what we reported on just about two days ago. About 12,000 people watched that video. It was a spectacular boom. And this is an ongoing event, probably reaching VEI 4 or greater at this point. Now, the earlier uh, false warning at Kotla was simply an exercise for an eruption from Future Volk as it conducts a study on what will happen when Kotla eventually goes boom in the near future and what will happen on the continent. So... We delisted the, vol the uh, video about 15 minutes after we published it because we were looking for confirmation, and we got confirmation that it was an exercise. An exercise in futility on my part. 2,000-year-old Celtic hoard of gold rainbow cups discovered in Germany. This is a type of coinage. And ancient hoards, uh, the value must be immense. Look at these fantastic pieces of history. This is insane. This was coinage in the form of cups, gold cups. Now, the 41 gold coins or cups were minted more than 2,000 years ago and are the first known Celtic gold treasure in Brandenburg. Manje Schul, the Minister of Culture in Brandenburg, announced in December of 2021. And we wanted to bring it to your attention. So if you are interested, please read more about the video. Now, Trading Town, exquisite figures found as dig for new UK rail line unearths the Roman past. And some of the stuff they brought up are amazing. A vast dig to lay the foundation of Britain's new high-speed train network is helping to unearth rich new details about ancient Roman life, including, well, some spectacular, and I don't even know if we can get them up here. Look at these. These are wooden figurines. There's the head. And there's the body. And they're just spectacular. Uh, here's a nice composite. Now, these were buried in the side of a bog. So in an anoxic environment where you're actually underground, the site is located in Northamptonshire, about two hours drive north of London, and is one of more than 100 being examined as part of the railway line project between the British capital and Birmingham. And the findings suggest that the settlement had become more prosperous than originally thought. And in fact, there are wooden figurines that are still, that are preserved. And, th and there they are. I, I can't bring up, bring up the picture, but they're pretty fantastic. The fact that it's wood. The currents of wooden figures in British prehistory and the Roman British period is extremely rare. And we can see that, well, <laughs> we've been lied to. Hello, let's boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Rex Bear and I went up to Creed, Colorado today. I did a little uh, informative tutorial and podcast on the uh, certain area of the mining district up there. So take a look at that over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project. But more importantly, over at Rex's channel, he's uploading an interview he did with me that I think may blow your mind. So go check that out. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, and the heroes that share this video. Be safe, and we'll see you in the morning on Rumble. That's boom. Mm -hmm.